Okay, today I want to do a brief overview of the use of commas in writing. Now, I know commas can be really difficult. They're actually really difficult for native English speakers as well. And the reason is that we use a lot of commas. And the truth is, we use more commas than we really need to. And so therefore, sometimes the commas that we use regularly are actually mistakes. So I want to talk to you today about the three most common situations in which you absolutely need to use commas and know those comma rules. So the first is when you have items in a series. The second is when you're connecting two independent thoughts together. And the third is when you separate um, introductory information or non-essential information. So we'll talk a little bit more about these three situations beginning with items in a series. So when we're talking about items in a series, the most important thing to remember there is that your items all need to be the same part of speech. So for example, if you have nouns, you could have a sentence such as, I ate potatoes, broccoli, and carrots for dinner. And you can separate each with a comma. There is one comma in there that's a little bit controversial. And we call it an Oxford comma. And this is the last comma in your items in a series. Some of your teachers may tell you, you have to have this comma. Some teachers may say, don't use the comma. And some teachers will say, use the comma if you want. My advice is use the comma unless your teacher tells you not to. And the reason is, there are some sentences that can occur in which that comma changes the entire meaning of the sentence. So it's always best to err on the side of caution and use that comma. Leave it in. Okay, let's look at another example of items in a series. You can do verbs. Um, my friend runs, swims, and rides horses for exercise. So you have a nice list of verbs. Okay, we can have a list of adjectives. I love my big old wool sweater. The thing to remember about adjectives is that adjectives go in a certain order. And that can be something that's difficult for native speakers to remember. But we instinctively know the order of adjectives. And if you're using your adjectives in a different order, a native speaker may not know what's wrong with the sentence, but they'll know that something sounds wrong. So it's a good idea to practice with this and memorize it. In time, you'll get used to using adjectives in the correct order. So that order is opinion, size, age, shape, color, origin, material, and purpose. So we call this coordinate adjectives. It's not important that you remember that it's called coordinate adjectives, but it is important to put those adjectives in the correct order. Now there is a type of adjective called a non-coordinate adjective in which you're not going to separate it with commas. So for example, if I say I'm wearing a dark green shirt, I'm not going to separate dark and green because Dark is describing the shade of green. That's called non-coordinate. So just keep that in mind. Don't worry too much about it if you're just starting with commas, but be aware that you will encounter that. Okay, the second rule for comma use is to combine two complete thoughts. So a complete thought you can think of as it has a subject and a verb and it can stand by itself. So if I have two complete thoughts, I can separate them with a comma, but I also need a coordinating conjunction. There are very specific coordinating conjunctions. They are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. An example sentence may be, I like blue, I have a blue car. 
I like blue, comma, so I have a blue car. Another example may be, I have a cat. She thinks she's a dog. I have a cat, comma, but she thinks she's a dog. So that's an example of connecting two independent thoughts together. Just remember your coordinating conjunction and your comma. Okay, let's talk about the third type of comma. That is to separate introductory information and non-essential information. So an introductory clause is not going to be a complete thought. So you're going to have to put a comma afterward. So an example sentence may be, um, on the table, there is a letter for you. On the table does not complete a thought. So therefore, I have to put a comma afterward. But if I take that same clause and put it on the end of the sentence, I no longer need the comma. There is a letter for you on the table. I don't need a comma in between that. Another example of this might be an if clause. If you finish your homework by 4 o'clock, we can go get ice cream. So the if clause is not a complete thought. I can't just say, if you finish your homework by 4 o'clock. That's not enough information. That's not a complete thought. I'm saying if. So I need to put a comma afterwards. If you finish your homework by 4 o'clock, comma, we can go get ice cream. Again, if I put the if clause at the end of the sentence, I no longer need a comma. We can go get ice cream if you finish your homework by 4 o'clock. Okay, let's talk a little bit about non-essential information. Non-essential information means that you do not need the information in the clause in order to understand the sentence. So, for example, my neighbors who have lived there for 20 years are moving. I don't need to know how long they've lived there in order to understand the main sentence. My neighbors are moving. So I'm going to separate that clause out with commas. Now it's important that you put both commas. A lot of people want to put one comma, but you cannot do that. You must put both commas. Separate out all of the non-essential information. Let's look at another example. My friend Nancy, who works at the university, is coming over for dinner. I don't need to know where Nancy works in order to know that she's coming over for dinner. I'm going to separate that out with commas. Okay, those are the three main situations in which you will use commas. There are other situations in English, of course, in which you will use commas. So, for example, with numbers, we're going to use commas. We use commas when we naturally pause in speech. But it's more important that you get these three rules down than worry about the other examples in which we use commas. It's becoming more and more accepted to leave these other commas off. In fact, it's better to have fewer commas than too many. And so I say focus on these three rules, especially if you have an English test coming up in which you're going to have a writing sample. It's really important that you use these three comma rules to make sure your writing is very clear.